We're actually in the midst of a complete revolution in how we think about atherosclerotic disease, the underlying disorders that cause heart attack and stroke. For 45 years or so, we have looked at this strictly as a cholesterol disorder. I think there are two very distinct areas that the field of lipids and inflammation biology uh, are going that are uh, intertwined. The idea that inflammation is part and parcel of what drives heart attack and stroke is a big change in how we think about things, but it's a critical change to understand where the field's going. Cardiologists have begun to change their practice over the course of the past few years, um, particularly because there's been a more intensive focus on lowering LDL cholesterol even lower, uh, and particularly doing so with uh, an intensification of the statin therapies that people are using, uh, shifting to more intensive and higher potency regimens, and potentially also adding then second or third agents to lower the LDL cholesterol further. There's been a new set of guidelines that were published in 2013, which advocated looking at the patient's overall or absolute risk of developing a cardiovascular event. And to do so used a new algorithm, a new risk prediction algorithm that incorporated a lot of um, risk factors aside from just LDL cholesterol, age and blood pressure and smoking status, uh, those sorts of things. And that has led to some controversy, of course, but has also adjusted the threshold at which people begin statin therapy to a lower threshold, probably, than we used to use, typically. Unfortunately, the debate about is the risk calculator good or bad, is it the best risk calculator we could use, do the thresholds make sense, do the targets make sense, has in many ways diminished the fundamental observation in this field, which is that multiple randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trials have told us if you take these agents on top of diet, exercise, and smoking cessation, and you take these agents daily, you simply do better. And the greater the percent reduction you get, you simply do better. And the longer you're on them, you do better. As a cardiologist, of course, most of my patients already have heart disease. So for me, it's just making sure that the patients are on a statin and that the statin is as intense as it can be. For primary care physicians, I think it's a different question because they're taking care of patients who, in many cases, haven't developed heart disease. And the patients and the physicians themselves are interested in preventing that first heart attack, stroke, or for that matter, a sudden cardiovascular death. What do we do when a patient who's on a high-intensity statin, when their residual problem is no longer the cholesterol, but it's actually this pro-inflammatory response? Can we begin to target the inflammation itself separate from the cholesterol, and bring vascular events under control that way. Because new data about this is going to be coming out, and the experimental structure of this has been very simple. Let's get the LDL very low, and then during the clinical trials, keep it flat. But drop interleukin-6, drop CRP, drop the inflammation, and let's find out whether that's safe and effective for also lowering vascular events. Non-HDL cholesterol is a very good measure of atherosclerotic risk. Uh, in fact, if you look at all the various lipid fractions, it may be one of the best predictors in epidemiologic cohorts of future heart attack, stroke, and cardiovascular death. One of the other exciting areas in this field is the recognition that two other lipid fractions probably are very important for atherosclerosis that maybe we've overlooked. One of those is triglycerides, or what some people call remnant cholesterol, and the other is lipoprotein little a or LP little a. And both are looking more important than perhaps we once recognized. There seems to be a lot of optimism that triglycerides are an important target and that we could potentially treat triglycerides a number of different ways. And potentially by lowering them, we could reduce the risk of heart disease and a heart attack and stroke even beyond what we do when we treat LDL cholesterol so aggressively. There's ongoing trials uh, of some... Um, fish oil supplements that lower triglycerides substantially. And there's another trial that's just started uh, looking at a new fibrate that could potentially also give us evidence that treating triglycerides at levels lower than 500 or potentially even lower than 200 uh, would make sense and would benefit our patients in terms of reducing their uh, cardiovascular risk. Residual cholesterol risk, residual inflammatory risk, 
residual triglyceride risk, maybe even residual LPLA risk, that's what we're gonna be doing differently. We're gonna be figuring out, what does my patient in front of me need that's different than the patient I saw just one hour ago? That's a big change in medical practice. It's also very exciting, and it's gonna be really good for patient care. Hi, my name is Kelvin, and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right and it'll take you to the full series.